everybody. Uh, I thought I'd share with you today uh, the cutting of my uh, lard and goat's milk soap. These are two loaves I made yesterday. Um, the loaves will hold about five pounds of soap each. Um, uh, this is 20 bars of soap, soap in each loaf. And I can, because of the size of this loaf, I can make 20 bars in about the same amount of time for the same amount of labor I use to make just 10 bars. So I've doubled my production without increasing my labor costs at all. So this is why I went with a larger loaf. Um, my major concern was gelling. I didn't want this soap to gel because I wanted to um, keep this a very light color. And um, because of the amount of soap involved, bigger loaf, you produce more heat. Um, but fortunately, uh, using the method of just freezing goat's milk and then adding lye to that goat's milk while that goat's milk is sitting in the container in an ice bath um, and adding the lye slowly allowed me to melt that goat's milk without scorching it. And the result is I was able to soap at a lower temperature and this never really got above 88 degrees, either one of these, which was nice. It kept it from, from browning. Now this will darken over time within that four weeks but it won't be as dramatic as if I let it go to full gel which would give you usually a caramel or a dark brown color and there's nothing wrong with that color just that I wanted some as close to white natural white as I could get so that's why we did this so let's start with uh, taking the soap out of the mold and it usually with these molds it's real simple you just pop out the bolts some people don't take those apart. I do. I like to do this because it allows me to clean it if I need to. Sometimes soap will leak and you do need to keep your um, molds clean um, just for aesthetics if, any, if more than anything else. But it makes it easier to pour your soap and if you're really like me and you want a good straight size and, and an even uh, looking bar and you don't want any soap in your mold, that will affect how the mold actually, as the soap actually comes out. So I just pop these, take these off the end, and set that there, and that's good to go. I'm gonna put this behind me. And then for the fun part, which is just very simply, peeling the paper down and off. This is just ordinary freezer paper. Does a really good job of um, keeping this from sticking to the mold and that's all I'm using it for. There's no other special reason. Uh, these, this soap has sat for about 12 hours. So it hardened pretty good, pretty fast. So let's just move this little fella out of the way over here. Put this in the trash. Move to our next load. There we go. It's a little heavy, five pounds. If you would, um, I'm 63, and this stuff does get, have a little weight to it. If you're worried, you may not be able to handle the weight. Just put, I'd say, seven pounds of water in a container and see if you can lift it. If you can manage that, you can manage a decent sized mold and five pounds of soap. So, just to remind you of the ways of finding out. Some people might have arthritis, or their bones aren't, aren't up to the task. Uh, the beauty of this, you can very quickly check out the weight before you buy, just by knowing your soap. Probably soap and container probably around about seven pounds. If you can lift that, no problem. Then you won't have any trouble using a larger mold. Something to consider in the future. Let's take the paper off of this guy. Now this is sat 12 hours and it's relatively firm but you still have to be careful because you can press in and leave some indentations in the soap if you may not want. And also I like to wear gloves because I don't want to leave fingerprints on my soap. I don't think your customer would appreciate it either unless you know you work for the FBI or something and you want to get as many fingerprints as you can. Well. Soap making is going to let you do it. So we're going to start off with our soap cutter now. This is um, 
I bought this from the uh, Workshop Heritage Soap Supplies Company. And I always do that. I always bend this over and manage to hit my soap. At any rate, um, got to make sure that's nice and tight. Get it up here. And there we are. That's what I'm looking for. So we'll start off by putting this on here, bringing it forward. And what I do, I made my loaf big enough, allow me to cut off about a, an eighth of an inch off of uh, each end. And that should give me 20 bars with maybe a sample left over at the end uh, that are one inch thick. For those of you who are wondering and cutting the soap uh, for many of you who already soap now is just as easy as pulling that down so this right here pull that right there is just the the sample end now one of the things that i like to do is get a paper towel and just wipe down the strain between each cut and that makes sure that whatever soap is left on here is gone otherwise when I pull this through the soap and there's soap crumbles on this it'll mark that soap and I don't I don't want to mark the face of the soap and I don't want to do that I like my soap to look nice and smooth so here we go pull that through and there you go right there this is that's lard and goat's milk soap and that's the first bar of this batch now I'll probably speed this video up. I don't know. We'll see uh, in production, post-production. Just because there's no design or swirl in this. It's a very simple plain soap. So you're not going to see a lot of things going on. So what I would do is just normally just speed this up and get you through it a lot faster to the final cut. And it's either that or fade. So I don't know. At any rate, I'm hoping these soaps will sell well. What's nice about these soaps is that um, they come from animals that have been really raised well. The uh, pigs this lard comes from are not kept in these containment pens you see in commercial commercial farms where the pigs are raised, you know, there's like a hundred pigs in a small pen. They're on top of each other. If you've ever seen that, pigs that are raised that way aren't very happy. And a happy animal will produce uh, a better quality meat. And so this farm, this lard comes from, is local. That's important. And the pigs are really happy. They're raised to be happy. They're, they're allowed to, uh, they're, they're basically free range. Uh, they're kept in fenced in lots. And the animals have access not only to normal feed, but feed they would get uh, by foraging and that's going to produce uh, a higher quality fat simply because the animal is able to get has access to other nutrients that aren't going to be in commercial feed alone commercial feed for animals is really designed to do one thing promote growth and at the end weight gain and the pig a lot of that weight comes from its fat which is lard and the profile of that fat is only going to be what the feed for the animal has to offer. The pig will take that feed and convert it into fat and it can only can make the fat based on what it has. So when you allow the animal to graze uh, naturally as well as from that feed, you're adding other nutrients and you're getting better quality fat. Different fatty acids in, that, in the fat profile of the animal than you would find in just a commercially raised animal. So that's why I did this. Second reason I did this with lard, why I chose um, animals raised like that, um, is that a lot of times, as I was speaking with the butcher that I got this from, he has a lot of lard left over. And it doesn't honor the, that animal to have to throw that out. So I said, hey, I've got a solution. I'll take your lard and convert it to soap. That way we have no waste. The animal, every bit of the animal is being used from the trotter to the squeal. Done. Otherwise that lard doesn't get used. It has to be thrown out and it gets into our environment and 
pollutes the planet. So buying soap is actually a healthy thing for the planet. Think about it that way. And it also, again, it honors the animal by ensuring every bit of the animal is utilized. And I, I think that's really important. Um, where I get my lard is at the Left Bank Butchery in Saxpaha, North Carolina. The owner's name is uh, Russ. And um, really good guy. I like the ethos of his butchery. Using uh, ethically raised animals and using everything, every bit of the animal um, that you can. I think that's he's a great guy and his products are excellent. I'm a, I am a meat eater and I enjoy what I bought. They have the guanciale that he has there, pig jowl that's cured, um, is outstanding. Um, I made uh, pasta carbonara the other night for me and my wife and used that uh, as the fat. It was just fantastic. Um, you can always tell an animal that's raised on a farm compared to one that's been raised in a commercial lot. The animal raised, pasture fed animal is always going to taste better no matter what. Simply because we can't put in the commercial food feed everything that an animal will find in nature. Commercial feed's good, don't get me wrong, it helps raise an animal in captivity, but if they don't have access to other ingredients, other nutrients in their diet that, that just doesn't include commercial feed, you're missing out. So Here's a quick look right here of uh, our lard and goat's milk soap. And as you can see, it's a nice, pretty bar. And I'm telling you, these soak really well. I had a video that showed them uh, earlier on, uh, them, how they were soaping. I think you're going to find this is a quality product. And I hope you'll consider buying one. Hey, y'all have a nice day. I got another loaf to cut. Talk to you.